Dan. Yep. And <laughs> correct. <laughs> uh, and we have been working on a Angular app. Uh, we're doing a shared calendar. Um, and we're making some good progress, I believe. We, we started working on add events. Right. So uh, if we look at what we've got now, um, we're at the home page. How do we? OK, so this is the home page. It shows us a calendar. Um, we finished month navigation, so we can navigate around. And then when you click on any day, it brings up this modal that we were in, in progress of working on, uh, yep. where you can add an event. Uh, currently just shows the day at the top here. A day, it shows the day and the time, the time being 0 o'clock. Uh, and then you can input the name of an event. And that's all we've got so far. So we're going to keep working on that. So, so do we want to flesh out like more fields on the dialogue first? Yeah, let's do that. Um, so right now we've just got a name. We're in the add event dialogue template here. We've got a close button and we've got a save button. Um, okay, let's see. The so value... I think we had like a description field. Um, yeah, let me do this real quick. Sure. Um, it was using the actual word name as the value instead of the name variable. So I'm just going to. Gotcha. Okay. Um, oops. Got a description. That's probably going to be a text field, though. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So what does uh, material have for. That is an excellent question. Let's go take a look. Oh, it's just Angular material. So there's input. So oh, I wonder if it's. I think it's similar to that leave a comment. Oh, you're right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So let's look at the code. If you click on the the angle brackets. Okay. Yeah. OK, oh, it's so just, it's just a text, just area. text area. Good. Okay. All right, so we've got a mat form field with a text area inside. Uh, It's got met input placeholder and that's it. So I think we're good. Met input placeholder. Um, how do you assign a value to a text area? Like how do how do we capture it? Is it just like that? What you have? Like the, the value attribute? Sure, hold on. I accidentally ended the form and the content multiple times here. Oh okay. Okay, so this goes here. Okay. So this value, isn't that uh... a line five? Like on line four for the input oh. fields, that works. But for text area, I don't know. I don't know. Can you do that? Well, let's. It's worth a shot. Huh. Okay. Well, let's see what happens. Uh, okay. Yeah. So we've got a name. We've got a description. We need um, the time, like the start time and end time, right? Yep. So those are going to be, we got to decide what sort of input we want that to be. Um, yeah. I wonder if there's like an easy, like I'm thinking of like just having like almost like three fields where you have the hours and minutes. I guess only two. I was thinking seconds, but I don't think that we want to get that granular. Okay. Um, yeah. So I've, I've used, let's see, I use a, an app called Time Tree. Okay. Um, and when you set the time, it brings up like a, a pretty handy um, input where um, there are, it's like a series of um, scrolls, I guess. Or they're kind of like um, iOS drop downs where it's like a, like a rotating thing, if you know what I mean. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's one for the year, month, day, 
hour, minute, and then AM and PM. Yeah. I find that to be pretty handy. Um, so you can select the day and time, basically. Um, hmm. We and already here we know wouldn't... the day. Yeah. So exactly. we could just have like two rotating things or whatever, or two drop downs. Okay. Should we just do drop downs? And then iOS will actually display them as a, as like a scroll thing. Yeah, we could do that. Let's, let's start with drop downs because it's easy, and then we can always change sure. it. Okay. Okay. That's fine. All right. So, what do these look like? It's just a mat select full of mat options. Interesting. Okay. We don't need line six, right? Yeah, you're right. Okay. Um, so there's an easy way to do uh, pre like predetermined arrays in line. Like, is that it? I think. It. Yeah, that might be it. Or is it like four hour in? I forget. <laughs> uh... It's a great question. <laughs> I think it's of. Oh, is that it? The array? So you could do, this guy's saying you do the triple dot mm -hmm. array, uh, open close parens to the number, dot keys. Oh, that's gross. Really? Is that how you have to do that? That's what, hmm. well, and this is pretty recent. It's like two years old. Um, yep, that worked. Although it always starts off at zero. You'd think we'd run across this more often. <laughs> yeah, no. Like, I feel like we've we actually ran into this at, at work, but I don't remember how he fixed it or how he solved it. it. Huh. <laughs> like, I swear there was like a, a super simple syntax to do this. Yeah. I want to say it was something like this. Um... Where you just did like the spread operator. Yeah. With the numbers. Yeah. That's what I thought. So theoretically that may or may not do something. It it won't. It won't. No.
probably going to be like an hour of us just looking this up. Yep. <laughs> okay, so I found a proposal on uh, the TypeScript forum, but they're not. Uh, okay. I don't see any. Uh... Is that I mean... it? Do I just have to put this in an array? Oopsies. Compile. Yeah, it doesn't like that either. Like I'm on uh, the TypeScript Lang playground. Unexpected character. EU. Oh, you are. You're doing that. Yeah. Like, okay. Let me. Okay, I have something else wrong with my template. I think I'm not oh, ending okay. a tag. It's saying, it's saying unexpected end of file. Okay. Text area, met form field. Uh, text area. You have to close text area. Oh, do you? Yeah. Oh, weird. Okay. 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 So what does this do? Oh, I have to import something, right? You do? Oh, for the select. Yeah. yeah. So it's probably going to be like ng select module. I forget where it tells you. Uh, under API. Okay. Okay, that select. that I hope I think so okay what did it do it seems to have been... it added one hmm let me see the code Yeah, I don't. I don't think that's right. Yeah, I don't think so, so either. All right. Yeah. So, what was the thing you that you said works? Uh, so you get rid of the uh, the bracket. So it'll be let hour of, okay. and it's uh, triple dot array uh, like open like close array. paren. Yep, like it, the array object. Yep. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, the array name, like you had just a second ago. Yep. Then open paren, then the the number that you want. Close paren dot keys, and keys uh, is a function. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. But you said it always starts with twelve or zero. Yes. Yeah, I don't like that. Um. Hmm. I mean, for did... now, let's just make an array of. Okay. You could just add one. In the yeah. uh, HTML. Do this. Wow, there's I found a, a good uh, Stack Overflow post. There's a lot of different answers. Oh yeah. Yep. Uh, so there's. Uh, let me send it to you. I can figure out how. So you could do like op uh, open close bracket dot constructor followed by a number. But I suspect it also starts off at zero. I swear there was some easy syntax where it's literally just like the the first number, the spread operator, and then the last number. 
Yeah, that's what I thought too. I swear I've seen that before. Maybe it's a different language. Maybe. Yeah. Oh well. That's too bad. Uh, wow. This... <laughs> yeah, my uh, my Visual Studio code, when I add like an attribute to a tag, uh -huh. it also adds it to the closing tag. Really? Yeah. That's weird. I don't, I have no idea why it does that. Both on my work laptop and my personal laptop. Huh. Yeah. Okay. So we got a drop down here. We got all, we got two drop downs. One is all the hours and one is all the minutes. Yep. So Spacing is really weird. Yeah. Let's put them next to each other. Okay. All right. So let's do that. All right. Um, so this guy select. Can I just go like this? Oops. Oh, it's like it's not showing the value. Um, so they, in the little demo. It's not showing the, oh, like when you select it, it's not showing it. Yeah. And, uh, okay. So they use value inside the option, which is weird. You'd think it would be on the select. Well, no, because the value is the value of the option. Oh. Okay, then but inside then... so i don't know how it it knows which one is selected like i don't know where it assigns to the model uh but i do have some code that i wrote that has that so on the mat select you can use the uh banana in a box ng model I'm sorry, one, one second. Yep. Okay, on the select, you said yep. use the ng model? Yep. Okay. Um, start. Oh, we need a start time and an end time, right? Yeah. Um, so we got like start hour. End hour. And then we need two of these. Oopsies. This is start minute. Yep. This could totally be its own component. Yeah, like I think that's right. The... We can we can extract it later. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So, whoops. does that look like? Okay. So this is going to be nine. What is that error? If ng model is used within a form tag, either the name actually must be set. Yeah. Okay.
Okay, and then we have to format this to look like time. Um, so like all the minutes have to be two digits. Yep. And then we have to like label these things. So we need like. Uh... So what you could do for the minute. What the hell just happened. You could just convert it into a string. Uh, add a, a zero mm -hmm. to it, like a zero string, mm -hmm. and then okay. just take the right, right two characters. I think you can. Is there an easier way? I was going to say, I think you can format it, but maybe not. Oh, like using the, the pipe operator? I'm not sure. I was going to say something like too fixed, but that only deals with after the decimal point. Uh, but I wonder if there's some equivalent of that. So this guy is saying you could do the number pipe and then you have like a key colon value. The key is number mm -hmm. spelled out. The value is uh, 2.0 in a string. Yeah, that's the exact one I'm seeing. You don't like it? Okay, pad start already exists. Okay, for strings. Right, so we just take the number to string it and then pad it. Okay, that's fine. Okay, <clears throat> so our is going to be our dot to string dot pad start. Then two comma zero. Okay. Is this not gonna that should work, right? I think it would. Alright, so we got start time with the labels up there for some reason. <laughs> um that did, that did not work. Oh you only did it to end. Oh, let's see if it worked on end. It did. Yep. Nice. This, <laughs> this looks awful. Okay. <laughs> um, let's just put this in a div. Maybe that'll help. Can I do this? No, that's too bad. Uh, okay. All right, we got start time, 9.33, end time, 10.40. All right. I still think this looks awful, but it does. technically it works. Yeah. So maybe let's just start with that. Um, so the name and description, they should be on top of each other, not next. Okay. All right. Um... So why are these, let's see. Is it, uh, these are divs, right? It's its own yeah, these are component. Divs. Okay, okay, right. Um, if you click on form, like what, uh, in the, yeah, display block, it is display block, yeah. okay. This is display inline block, the form field inside of it. So it's taking this uh, mat form field. Yep. And it makes so a div it, out of it. Oh, no, it doesn't. It's right here. There's a div. Should, we, should we do uh, uh, a flex, uh, flex box? I don't know if we need to. Okay. Um, if we just uh, take this and make it display block, 
Yeah, I mean, you'd have to add a custom class because I don't think we can override the mat form field unless we do it globally, but then that could cause issues. Yeah. So, I mean, basically that is what we want, right? Yeah. Without the, without the text add event question mark? Yeah. We can get rid and of that. We can get rid of this. Although, uh, it would be n nice to show the date, I suppose. Yeah, we could format, format that. Yeah. All right. So, um, let's start with that. Add event for... Actually, I feel like the the dialogue title should be the action. Dialogue title should be the action. So, like, add event. Oh, I see, I see. So, this should go here. Yeah. Add event for date, and then let's format this. So date dot date is a moment, so we should. Yeah. I bet we can. I bet we could still use the pipe formatting. Yeah. Right. I don't know. How do you do that? Um, isn't it like uh, you just do like the the pipe in the template, and isn't isn't it like date time or something like that? Oh, we just want the date. I just do this. Right. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sweet. Okay. Um, I think we could probably spell the whole month out. Okay. I think it's like a, what is it, like a long date? Yeah. So when you have a second, go back to the template. So after date, do colon and then tick long date. Like that? Is that a colon or a semicolon? Oh, a semicolon, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, then close tick. Yep. Okay. Okay. All right, cool. I think that's better. Uh, okay, so description needs to be below. Um, so we could just do this, just wrap each of these in a div. Okay, I'm fine why with that. It, why is it doing that? It's like selecting both blocks. I'm good. All right. Hmm. Why is this whole thing wrapped in a label? Um, because it says start time. But labels are usually for like a specific field. These are the two fields that are start time. Oh, right. But, well, let's do this. Let's just I mean, have label there and see what it looks like. Okay. And even putting the div inside the label seems a little weird to me. Um, I feel like I've seen it that way a lot. Okay. So we've got a start time. Why are these stacked now? What happened there? Oh, because I put them in divs. Is that what I wanted? That's not what I wanted. I wanted these in divs. Whoops. <laughs> All right, let me backtrack a little bit. Okay, that should be better. I broke something. What's the, yeah, okay. I expected closing tag form, so I didn't close something. Uh, line 10. That needs to go up into the div. Oh, thank you. Okay. Right. Okay, we got name, description is a text area. Then we've got a gross start time and end time. <laughs> it was pretty nasty. Yeah. <laughs> okay, these I want to fix real quick. So, okay. um... The value is this or that. Why not just default it in NGN in it? That's a better idea.
Mm. Yeah, okay. There we go. Okay. Polka dot party. That sounds exciting. <laughs> All right. It's going to be a long polka dot party. It's going to start at 3.04 a.m. and wow. go until... Oh, there's no a.m. or p.m. Nope. Well, I mean, it's military time, but... Oh, that's true. You're right. Yeah, you're right. Do we want military time or a.m. and p.m.? Probably. Um, I think a.m. and p.m. A.m. p.m. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of the world understands military time, except for America. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Um, so we're going to go from 1 to 12. And then... Let's see. Hours. We need another one of these. Start... AM, PM, Ampum. Sure. And the value, we're just going to have two of these. The value is AM. OM. That's new. Okay. Okay. Oops. Okay. How does that look? Ooh, so now there isn't room for three, but we could make these smaller. We could make the dialogue bigger. True, we could. But do we need to? Um, yeah, I guess you're right. All right. So 3.03 p.m. until 3.05 p.m. This is going to be a sweet party. Yeah. So now we should... Uh... We have to save, which will convert the start time and end time into like actual times. Yep. And then create the event. Okay. All right. So, um, save call save event, which exists. Okay. So all we need to do is, um, we need the. Do we have the service for the uh, to save the event? Or no? Did we make that yet? I don't know. I think on the server side we did. I don't know if we did anything on the client side. Okay. Oopsies. Shared app services. We did not. Okay, so we can do that in a sec. Okay. Um, so this is a moment. Okay. Um... So should we like parse the date and then we just construct it? Yeah. This is a thing, right? Uh, that's a good question. Where did I put moment? All right. My uh, oh, it's just moment. My camera went white on the screen. Oh, my bad. I opened up Firefox on top of you. Oh. Okay, so we got a moment. Yep. Can we pass anything into this? Or do we just set? Set here. Okay, so we can set various things. So does this happen okay. AM and PM, or do we convert it to like military time? I was thinking that we just 
create a string mm-hmm. based on the values, and then we parse it. Okay. Like that might be easier than calling set multiple times. Okay. So parse string. Okay. So let's do this. So we know the date, right? Yes, we do. Where is that though? Where is that? Oh, that's oh, data. Oh, of data. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So it's just moment dot. Wait. We... Oh, okay. You pass it in. Okay. All right. Data dot date. Oh, what does that look like? So that was the whole long string. Yep. Um, yeah, you, you know, know, it might be easier to just take that because we know that's beginning of the day and then we just like add hours and minutes to it. Yeah, I think you're right. Okay. So we, we should be able to clone it, right? Yeah. So we can just do this. Okay. Add hours. Wait. Uh, manipulate. Add. Oh, okay. Uh, first thing is the number. Okay. So. So I think we just add the start hour, unless it's, and then if a.m. p.m is pm then we also add 12. right right okay okay uh... also in line 24 and 28 those should be strings okay hold on start hour yep. um although i know you're in the in the like a groove but i'm thinking maybe we could leave them numbers and then in the template, AM is zero and PM is 12. We could, but why? Because then you could just say uh, add start hour plus start AM PM. Oh, I see. That makes sense. Yep. Okay. Is that getting too clever though? Yes, but I think, I think we could do it. <laughs> no, we can do whatever. All right, I'm just going to do this. This this is like pretty straightforward. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um Okay. No, oh, actually I don't need that. All right. And then basically this for end time. And then 56. Oh, and you're getting there. Okay. Okay, so we got a start time and an end time. So now we kind of need the service. Um, so services. We'll call it user events. Event. Oh, that's right. We call them user events. Copy this wholesale and so we got user events. We don't need this, we don't need that, we don't need nope. this, uh, we don't need those. Do we need a router? Nope. I don't even, oh, yeah, we need the router for the login. For the login? Yeah, in user service. We have like. I'm in user login. event service. Yeah, in user event service, we don't need it. Oh, I was just yeah, trying yeah. to figure out why we had it in the user service. I see. Okay, so I'm just going to get rid of that for now. Mm-hmm. User event. Okay, so I think we should taking a username. It's going to take a user event. Yeah, that's going to return the user event. 
Okay, so user event has a name. It's got a description. It's got a start time. Should we use it start date? Yeah. Do we want an oh? Do we want an event to last longer than a day? Yeah, it can. Okay, because currently it cannot in this because our end time uses the start date. Right. Which I think for now is fine, but uh, the schema supports an event that spans multiple days. So we can we can tackle that. Okay. So let's later. maybe like add a card for it, I guess, in Trello. Yeah. Um Okay. Yeah, so what you could do for that is instead of clicking, you would click and drag across multiple days. Hmm. Interesting. That could work. Yeah. Okay. All right. So this is a moment. Is it a, is it going to be a moment? I don't know. Um, we've been dealing in moments. I'm just wondering, like, how it's going to serialize, but yeah, I guess... I'm not sure. Yeah, we'd have we don't have moment in the server, do we? I don't think we do. So if we import moment into the server, maybe we it'll be fine. See, I don't know that we need to. Um, just turn it into a date. That's what I'm thinking, but we could try this and just see what happens, like in the the JSON that gets posted. Yeah. And then we have to worry about when it gets serialized to the database as well. I'm not really sure what'll happen there. Well, on the server side, it's it's defined as a date. No, oh, okay. I meant if we have moment server side as well. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Well, we'll get to that. <clears throat> yep. Uh, okay. So this guy. Excuse me. So one thing I like to do is I create an object called like a, a shadow object. Okay. And if I'm creating it, then in ng on init, I just initialize it to a new object. But if I'm editing, mm -hmm. then I essentially clone the data that's being passed in. Oh, okay. So then that way, uh, on the create, it's cleaner. You just say create, then pass in the shadow object. I see. Okay. We'll but <clears throat> for this case, I think it's be more complicated because we have the start and end time split out into three different things. Yeah. True. So I think for now, let's go with this. Okay. Yeah. Well, and I guess we'll we'll get to that when we get to the edit form, which will be yeah. this form. But. Yep. And we might want to tackle that component we talked about. Oh, of, componentizing uh, the date selector or yeah. the time selector thing. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Uh, oopsies. It really is just a time. Although it's not, it has the date on it. Yeah. Okay. Start time. Why is there only one? Find start it's a time. good question. It's right there, too, on 47. What the hell? Oh, I'm searching in the block. Oh. Okay. Okay. Oh. You could do the shorthand if you want. I actually honestly don't really like the shorthand. Neither do I. I find it confusing. Yeah. Let's uh, kill okay, it. We'll just turn it off in the linter some sometime. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, import 
star as moment from moment. Uh, you already have line three oh. that imports moment. Okay. All right. So I'm going to turn this off. Well, line length. so that breaks line 45, though. Okay. So I don't know how you want to do this. Yeah. Like, should it just be import star as moment? And then on 46, the type is moment that moment. Yep. OK. Oh, it's already in here. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Alrighty. Fixed. Date. Moment. Uh, moment. Uh, moment. All right. Everything is peachy green. Uh, now we need to call it, right? Save event. We already are. Oh, yeah, you're right. Uh, do we need to import it in the module, app module, the service? Um, you know what? Are we subscribing to this? Nope. And then we also probably well, need to clean up. Yep. Do we have a base component? Nope. We don't. Oh, we didn't do any cleanup anywhere. OK. Well, this is the first time we're using a service, though, I guess, right? Uh, no. We're using the user oh, service. The user service. OK. Yeah. Oh, we do have a base component. Oh, OK. Perfect. We thought of this. Yep. <laughs> and that just needs to call super. Yeah. OK, so. Cool. Uh, in app module, did you add the service? see if it works yeah. it's a beer moment okay so on the 23rd we're going to add an event the polka dot party again all right it's going to go from 9 30 p.m until 11 there's no 12. is there a zero no. It just okay. goes from 1 to 11. <laughs> uh, I mean... There is 12 o'clock noon. True. That's true. All right. Fine. 11.30 p.m. Do it. We got a 4.04. OK. OK, so let's check the URL. Did we, oh, we uh, never set that, did we? Oh, we did. I don't think we ever registered it. Oh, you're right. User event. OK. Um, user event. Oh, we never made a controller. I thought we did. I thought we did, too. Is it under the user controller? Oopsies. I think it's under users. We would have done that at event. Oh, you're right. Yep. Oh, OK. So look at the user routes. ID. Oh, yes. that's right, 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 right. right. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So we actually don't even want this user event service yet, or at all. I guess we don't want it at all, huh? No, I think we should. Uh, like, I feel like if we keep adding stuff into the user service, it's going to get really big. Yeah, but like logically, I think we were saying that you're never going to want to do something. You're never going to interact directly with events. You're always going to do it through the user because the. Right. Like, I, 
so I guess what I am also suggesting is we could move that add event out into a user's event controller uh -huh. that has the ID in the, the path. So yeah, yeah, I feel like it, because I mean, there's also gonna be like a post, there's gonna be a get uh, specific ID, there's gonna be a put, Yeah. there's gonna be a delete. Yeah. So that's, I feel like it's gonna be a lot of stuff. And then eventually there might be more stuff on users and then that controller would get huge. All right, I can see it. Okay, so actually, you know what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy this whole thing. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm in more of the mindset of like a controller handles one type of object and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, of course there are cases where that can't always happen, but. I think it should be user events controller okay. to be consistent with the user's controller. Right. Okay. Um, so right now we're concerned with create. Yep. Actually, we're concerned with add event, uh, but really this is create. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> so we need a routes. Routes. Actually. Okay, <clears throat> so it's actually that's so just gonna be route... it's gonna be posted to the root, and then where we include this would be the the full path. So it'd be slash users slash ID slash events. I see. That makes sense. Okay. I think you still need, yeah, okay. So then inside of here, users. I wonder if we want to label, like instead of using ID, if we want to say user ID. Yes, this, that makes sense. Yeah. user events controller uh it, the imports are incorrect now are we even using this user model yeah we are okay yep. okay so we actually return the whole user and I think in our user service in client, we expected the uh, the event. The event. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. User. Okay. So unfortunately, we have to like find it in here. Yeah. I think maybe we just don't send the event back on creates. I'm yeah, I guess. I mean, uh, it really actually makes sense to set back the whole user. Yeah. Does it, though? Yeah, because we'll be going back to, like, the modal will close, and we'll be back at looking at the whole calendar. Right, but do we really need to refresh the whole user? Because we just created an event. We should know the state of the user. Yeah. I feel like it doesn't hurt, though. 
case yeah. they like doing this on their phone as well. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, and it's minor stuff. We can tweak it later. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So we have this user event service. Um, so it's going to user and then an ID. Oopsies. I think for now it's always going to be one. Or do no? We actually have user IDs. Never mind. Yeah. Um, so we need the user. Do we have like a cached user in here? We do. We do. So okay. in user event service, you could actually pass in the uh, the cached user or uh, the user service. Yeah. Um, okay, and then a slash. And then I think we just called it event, right? Uh, I think so, yeah. Uh, user event routes. Okay. Or was it events? That was under here. Events. It's events. Okay. I have too much shit open. Events. <clears throat> okay, we're posting. No. Sorry. Uh, right before you went to server TS, I thought I saw that same URL somewhere else. Oh, here. <clears throat> okay. Good call. Okay. So I think we should be good. Um, can you go back to the user events controller? Yes. So line 13, rec params.id should uh -huh. be user ID. Good call. Oh. Okay. Right. Now I think we're ready. I think we're ready to go. Yep. Okay. On the twenty third, I am making the polka dot party. Starting at nine thirty PM and it's going until ten thirty PM. <clears throat> Error. Not found. User ID event. Events. Can't find it. Why? So it didn't register the route. For some oh, reason. is it users? Oh, is it? You might be right. Users. Yeah. Yep. Dang it. Users. Also, real quick, I'm going to do this. Okay. Here we go. <clears throat> Third time's a charm. Yep. We've got our polka dot party. All right. We're starting at nine thirty p.m. Going to ten thirty p.m. Go. Hey, no error. What do we All have right. in the database? You should really install Rule 3T. Yeah, I know. <clears throat> maybe, uh, maybe next week's stream, I can spend the yeah. entire time uh, uninstalling this and installing Rule yeah. 3T. There you go. <laughs> oh, Dan the Man. Events one. Name Ooh. blank. Description blank. Start Perfect. date. 124, 330, yep. end date, 124, 430. Okay, the duration is correct. That's pretty much the only thing we got right. I think, like, could uh, GMT explain that? Or no? Oh, you might be right. Although that's, right? I don't think it can because today's the 22nd. Oh, is it? Yeah, so it, oh. it is. Oh, you're right, right. it yeah. is. Okay. All so right. I would have expected it to be 123, maybe, but... Okay. So everything is still a miss. But we sent it as a moment. Maybe that had something to do with it. I bet the day is the problem. Could be. Like, I think the day is zero-based. So this guy... Maybe. 
Well, I mean, we should debug it, really. Yeah. Um, yes. Why sure. did this not come over? So. Did we bind them to anything in the template? Value. Oh, we didn't. We just set the value. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's debug this. Mm -hmm. What is this called? Add event dialog. Uh, yeah, I forget. And I'll have to give it a name, so it'll be... <laughs> name, name. Yep. Why do we have to do that? Do you know? I don't know. It's just one of those Angular things. Yeah. But it's only within the form field. Yeah. Right. Okay. Just if you use ng model in a form field. Yeah. So I guess it kind of makes sense. Well, maybe not. But I thought it made sense. Hmm. Now it doesn't. <clears throat> All right. Here we go. So our start date is January 23rd, 2020 at 000 GMT. Oh, that's the date that I chose. Oh, that's why it's the 24th. I probably clicked on the 24th. Okay. Okay. All right. So now we're going to add start hours, which is nine hours. Yep. We're adding nine hours to 000. Okay. Oh, zero, zero, zero at GMT minus six. Right. Which is correct. We're at minus six, right? So now start time is nine at GMT minus six. Mm -hmm. AM, PM is PM. <clears throat> so we're going to add 12 more hours. Yep. So start date is 23rd, 21. That's... Yep, that's nine. Okay. 9 PM. Okay, now start minute is 30. Mm -hmm. So start date is 21.30, GMT minus six. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, that seems End good. Date, 22.30 seems good. Okay, so now end date is a moment. I bet this is the problem, the fact that we're sending a moment. Description. I don't, I don't think there is a problem. You don't think so? No. Because I, I think you clicked the 23rd, and then it converts it to GMT, so it adds six hours. Okay. Oh, that's why it was the next day. I did click on the yeah. 23rd. You're right. Yeah. All right. How do I refresh this like this? Okay. So now there's two events. And we have the name, and the dates are what yep. we think they should be. Okay. okay. Cool. Super cool. Awesome. All right. And that was our hour. Yep. So next week we want to display the, the events, presumably. Yeah, I think that'd be good. Okay. So AED events, we're still working on it. Yep. We could break it up and say we A and we A yeah, events. Yeah, edit. To the... <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Yeah. That's fine. That's fine. All right. Good progress. So yeah. the next time we stream will probably be what, Monday? Yeah, I think so. Usual time. All right, Monday, 7 p.m. So, All right, sounds good. Cool. See ya.